So, still building a hardtail, and this is part five. Here we are, part five of the Hello Dave build. It's going swimmingly, everything's coming together nicely. So, now that everything's in place, we need to be able to propel it forward. So, today is going to be all about the drivetrain. So, uh, here we go. So, now we're on to the final stages here. We've got a crank set that we're going to install. Now, this is a Shamox set is um, to the standard of Holotech 2 though. This came from an older model of Boss Nut, so the Boss Nut Evo. And it's just a case of slotting it in there. And we're going to spin around so you can have a look at the other side as well. So here we have the corresponding end as well. So we need to make sure, so if the crank's down there, we're going to match the crank with it being upright at 180 degrees. Because obviously that's how pedals work. And it is just a push on there. Now I've got an end cap piece that goes on here that we need to tighten on so it takes out all of the play. So it's an Allen key that drives this one on. And what we're trying to avoid is any sideways movement. So we don't want any of that. We want to have the whole thing locked down and into place. So I'll go grab my tool. So if I hold there and just tighten on. That's it there, and if I grab either side and the frame, there is no sideways movement there. I can't feel any clicking. So now all we have left is the pinch bolts on either side to tighten up. So these, that was a five millimeter Allen key used for there, and these are four. So these are just pinch bolts, so I'm just gonna turn them until I feel the resistance. As soon as I do that, then I'm gonna move to the other side, and again, we're just going to tighten until I feel resistance. So you're supposed to even them up. Even the pressures are coming up so one doesn't bind on more than the other. And then once both of them are evenly pressed up, we tighten them up. So there's nothing on this, no markings at all to say how tight to go. But ballpark figure 10 newton meters should be fine for this size of bolt. It is only a 4 millimeter head. You don't really want to be wrenching it on and rounding out the head so there we go so the essentially now you could take off that end cap and these would hold it in place all the play's been taken out but it's handy to have these really because it stops any dirt and grime getting into the spindle shape so this is where the mech comes in handy now this mech system again it's coming from a boss nut background it is a SRAM NX to attach these we have this here is your pivot where everything's going to rotate and pivot from it's a five millimeter Allen key that goes inside there. And this is gonna go into the mech hanger. So we're making sure that on, on this side that everything's gonna marry up against this tab. Making sure we're not cross threading. So it should go in relatively easy to start with. To there, then just a little nip up. And there we have, a rear mech is now attached, ready to go. So we have our front crank in place, we have our cassette on at the back, but what we need to do now is make sure that we have enough chain so it's not too tight, not too loose. So what you do is we connect it all up. So we loop it over on the front crank and we connect it over the biggest gear that's on the rear as well. Because this is what we need to see for capacity wise, will the chain stretch enough? And we're looking to see how much overlap we have. This end comes to this link here which means that we have these two extra links, it's actually three links there, extra. Now this is actually what we're after, so my chain, without me doing anything, is actually the right length. So two links, three links is what we're after. If it was a full suspension system, you would want four, because the, the rear end actually changes geometry. The chain gets longer and shorter depending on the position of the suspension. But this is a hardtail, so we'll go for two links. This has got three. I'm quite happy to stick it at three. We're now going to root our chain, so we now have the correct length of chain. We're going to root it through and make sure everything's connected the right way. We need to make sure that when we're at the front, the chain ring on a single one by system is always narrow wide, which means the teeth alternate between a narrow tooth and a wide tooth, and that's what locates the chain in place. When we come to that, now the, the rear mech isn't connected yet to the cable, there's no tension, so it's not telling it any gear. So by default, it's gonna be at the highest gear all the way out towards the frame this side. So it's gonna root from there. We're gonna drop the chain down in between the cage, like so. 
and is going to come looping at the bottom end of this jockey wheel at the bottom and come out to the front. So as we pull this all tight, we've got to make sure that the jockey wheels are meshing correctly with the chain. If they are not, they need to be rotated a little bit so that they do get into the right positions. And then we're just going to pull it through. This is the ends of our chain. I've slotted in the power links. The power links do have an arrow on them as well for direction. Um, they do say that the arrow should go as the direction of travel. So the chain goes this direction to the rear derailleur. Um, I don't think it would actually matter, to be honest. But I'm not going to argue with them. So there we go there. We'll give them a wee pull. And that gets some kind of locked in there. We see the power link here, but the the end of the rivet isn't all the way to the end so the best way of doing this is actually to pull a whole load of back brake and then if we pull on the cranks you'll see that it pings itself into position as soon as you put tension on it so make sure that when you look at it that it is properly meshed up there's no gaps it hasn't mismatched just one connecting but the back end hasn't so you'll notice that i still don't have the cable connected for the rear mech there's a reason for that because I want to set the endpoints with no cable influencing. So if I turn the cranks now, the chain is going to settle down to its lowest position. Now you notice in this case that it's not went to the lowest 11 tooth gear here, it's actually one up. So what we need to do is we need to make adjustments to our end stops. So this is a mechanical stop that stops the mech moving too far this way or too far in towards the wheel. So the adjustment we need to make on the NX system is this little Allen key here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just turn this in so limit how much it can move or bring it out the way if it's too far in this case. And I'm going to make adjustments until we get it jumping back onto the highest gear. So if I back out from here and I keep going. Out of the way. So if I keep going, keep cranking around, there'll come a point as I'm loosening this off there has jumped on to the lowest setting there. Now if I turn this, I shouldn't hear any jumping. It should be a clean connection, shouldn't want to be jumping away from there. So you can hear it, it's all nice and good there. We've done the end stop for the highest gear, so the 11 tooth. But I've still not connected the cable up yet, so what I want to do is I'm going to be turning the cranks and I'm going to be using my hand as a replacement for the lever and I'm going to push the bottom of the mech all the way in. So as I'm turning, I'm just pushing in and you'll notice that this will change the gear as we go. Now what I'm trying to find out is the limit. So I'm pushing against this until I get resistance. Obviously we're not trying to bend the mech. We're just pushing it in till it changes all the way to the end. So physically the mech can't go any further that way but it needs to in order to get this last gear. So we're going to make that adjustment now. The way we adjust that is the second screw that's here. So I'm going to connect up there and while I'm pushing I'm going to turn. So if I tighten, so if I turn in the way this actually moves the mech out even further, which is not desirable, which is not what we want. So we want to, to loosen things off. So if we turn this direction, and what we want to do is keep turning, and then we can check. Now, when you're turning the cranks, make sure your knuckles don't get caught up with these gears here. So I'm just going to rotate it around. And as you can see, now at this new position, we're getting all the way to the end. And if we keep turning, I can feel just a little bit of, not grinding as such, but a little skip through the mech. So I'm going to just rotate it out just a little bit more. And there seems to be spot on. So if I now turn, let everything go. We jump all the way back down to the highest gear, 11. So we've now set the end points, so we cannot change the chain into the inside of the frame. We've got the right amount of adjustment there. And we also know that the mech can't push beyond this top granny gear because we've set the limit. So the mech can't go anywhere further than there or there. So we've set its limitations so there's no damage can be gotten from the frame or from the wheel. 
Okay, we've moved ourselves up to the handlebars because we have the shifter needing installed. So again, it's uh, matching up with the tail end, so it's SRAM NX, 11-speed shifter. So I'm dropping this on. Now, I've no idea where the final position is going to be, so I will just put it in roughly about there. So bike's inverted at the moment, so I've got my outer cable that I'm going to use. Now I've got a massive long length of it at the moment that needs to be cut down. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the inner cable. I'm just going to thread it into the end of this outer cable. So it's going to protect the inner cable from getting all frayed as it's into the outer cable there. And we're just going to push this all the way up till it's onto the shifter. Just there. With all this excess of cable is we can route it round and take it where we need it to go. Looping around the front end and then we're coming in for this set of brackets here. So I'll do that one. Again with that one. And just working our way all the way along. We're just about to cut the outer cable, but we need to make sure that the inner cable isn't going to be in the way. So what you can do with most um, mechanical shifters is you can pull the cable through. So I'm just going to pull it through a good length. So I know that when I cut through the outer cable, I'm not going to be cutting through that cable. But we're ready to make the final cut for the outer cabling. The outer cable in this case comes from the bottom of the frame and it's going to go into this molding within the the rear mech so it need to be about there i'm going to give it just a little bit of slack so i'm going to cut it just about here um if need be i can come back to this and cut it down even more and again good set of cutters to cut through all of this binding because there's a lot in there there's metal there's plastic with the end of the cable cut we can now add this ferrule on there and that is going to slot into there so there we are plenty of room for all of that back there and now we're going to push the inner cable all the way through and get it connected up to the mech run this cable in and around the pulley you're going to see it popping out at the other end just there and then that goes into the next run which loops around this section here comes all the way out here so i need to take all the slack out pull it all the way through and it's going to just loop underneath here and then we're just going to tighten onto this section there so before we tighten that cable onto the mech we want to make sure that we've got the right gear selected so we're going for the 11 tooth which is the highest gear so we want to make sure that we're at the very, very bottom of that ratchet there. Cable is now attached, it's tensioned on, and we are in the lowest gear. There's one last thing we need to set up before we start indexing the gears correctly. So what one used to do is select all the way to the top so that we can now adjust our B screws. If the B screw isn't set correctly, it's not the end of the world, but if it's miles out, it can give you either problem shifting or worse, it can mean that the mech, the mechanical mechanism here for selecting actually comes into contact with the cassette. So we don't want either, we want to find the optimum which is in between. So at the moment we can see the jockey wheel here for the mech and this is the cassette here are miles apart. There's a huge difference between them. Now what that will give us right now is very sluggish changing. So I could actually drop one gear and it might not be enough to actually pull it from the granny gear to the next gear down because there's so much gap in the chain, the chain's allowed to flex a little bit in between. But our objective now is to bring this jockey wheel closer. 
So if I start turning this way, so I'm starting to loosen off, you'll notice that the gap is starting to close. And I'm going to bring it in till essentially you've got about two or three links space between it leaving contact there and making contact here. Now what that should give me now is very precise shifting. So as you can see, when I make an adjustment, it's very accurate and every shift is counted.